In this video, I'm going to give you some ideas on making a uh, wind sculpture or whirly gig or whatever you want to call it. I'll show you ways to use bearings and uh, different materials. Like you can see right in front of you here, we have uh, acrylic, stainless steel, and aluminum, and copper. So let's get right to it. Okay, first let's uh, let's take a look at these. These things are meant to look like flowers. These are acrylic plastic, which uh, one of the trade names is plexiglass. And I make them using this croquet ball. And what I do is I'll, I will uh, heat up the plastic. This is a piece right here. Take off the paper first, first of course. I'll, I'll heat it up with a heat gun and then wearing gloves, insulated winter gloves, place it on there and form it around it and hold it for about 30 seconds. And when the plastic cools, you have something like this. It's a nice, lightweight, strong cup to catch the wind. The uh, sun won't affect it. Plexiglass or acrylic plastic is pretty much unaffected by the sun. Okay, this stuff here, this is half inch by an eighth inch aluminum. You find that in hardware stores. And this is a one inch version, or yeah, this is a one inch piece. I didn't have any half inch left. And you can form that by making something like we have here. You see the slot? That's pretty much the right size. For the aluminum, you can then just bend it by hand around this circle to make bends. And so that's how this bend was formed. I then twisted it, I then clamped this half in a vise and grabbed this with a, well in, in my case it was a, a wood clamp, and I just twisted it. Okay, this is a piece of aluminum. I just uh, cut out of a, a sheet that looks like it's a little more than a sixteenth of an inch thick. We have on top here uh, a nylon locking nut. You might call it a nylock. Everything's stainless steel or aluminum. This all thread here is stainless steel. There's stainless steel nuts down here. This bearing housing that you see Doesn't look like it's focusing terribly well, but uh, uh, that bearing housing can be purchased from a robotics place. I'll have the um, URL listed down under the title of the video. We have the same setup over here, except this aluminum. You see it's, uh, it's an angle. It's L-shaped, and then I just put a little curve to match these curves. These are simple little stainless steel cups that come with cheap kitchen stuff and again we have the uh, quarter inch stainless all thread some more cups and you see there's copper holding it all together now we'll let's look into that copper a little bit closer okay i got these springs on here that's what hold it together Take, release these two springs, and the bottom comes out, and here we have some 3 8 all thread. This isn't stainless, I didn't have any stainless on me. So 3 8 all thread, a couple of nuts. We got these two bearings you can see here. These bearings have a 7 8 inch outside diameter, 3 8 inch inside diameter. So they fit perfectly inside a one inch copper T. As long as you have something from below pushing it in. Now I, I could have soldered that piece in and the bearings probably would have been okay, but I wanted to have it be removable. 
on the top, this nut is actually, I, I, I pinned it onto the bolt. So this nut cannot turn, or pinned it onto the all thread. So this nut absolutely cannot turn. So you, you set the tightness down here. And you can get these fairly tight. These, these are pretty strong bearings. You can squeeze them together like that and they'll be okay. So that's where you get that part. Okay, let's do some more bearing talk here. here here's, those, here's those bearings we had inside the copper pipe. I, I had tried this once. This, is, this thing is steel. It was inside um, a uh, big computer from the from the mid 70s uh, that you may have seen in another video these bearings go inside but uh, that steel was just ridiculously hard I, I did manage to drill and tap on these but it was it was just too much effort that's my idea with the copper pipe right, let's move that out of the way if you want something even larger Here's a bearing that's got a half inch hole in the middle, one and an eighth on the on the outside dimension. And that will fit inside. Well, what size is this? This is one quarter, one one inch copper pipe. That's a uh, I'm not sure what you call it. It's, it. it's a sleeve that goes over the pipe. So for instance, here's three quarter copper. It goes into that. Same thing with this. This is one inch copper and regular one inch will go inside of it. But it will capture that bearing and provide what you'd call a bearing carrier. Because that, that's kind of the whole trick behind the, all this. You gotta have some way to carry those bearings. Okay, let's go a little smaller. I don't recall where these came from. This, these are an internet thing. They're, um, they're 5 16 inch ID. And if you can see, there's a, uh, there's a tiny little set screw in there, which is interesting because then that will clamp on to your 5 16 all thread. And then you would uh, sandwich these together and probably have a piece of metal in between these with a hole in the center, of course. And uh, as a way of housing that bearing and getting it to hold something. That's kind of up to you. These these things, I don't recall where they came from. Those are five sixteenths. Here are some uh, quarter inch ones that are the, the, the same idea. You, you, if, if you do these, you need to use two of them because one of them is just going to kind of flop around. And these don't have the set screws, so they're not quite as handy. And plus, this is steel. You don't really want steel. Aluminum is good. Stainless is good. Copper is good. Steel, nah, not so good. Okay, and finally, this is what is inside here. This is a little thing from a, a robotics firm. I'll, I'll have the link below. And it's, it's three, it's one quarter ID inside. It fits pretty nice. The bearings are one half inch OD. Those are readily available. And there's two of them in here and you can get this to uh, from the robotics place and then you can have a little flange around it with a bunch of holes in it that you can attach things to which you which you saw in, in the whirly gig here just a few minutes ago these are a little funky in that when you squeeze this together if you have a nut down here and you squeeze it together it can kind of bind that bearing a little bit you have to have it just right or it'll, it'll be bound in it and it won't want to spin if it, you know if it's too loose and it's then it's spinning on the all thread and you don't really want that so these these are a little little funky a little tricky to deal with uh, this is just a spacer this was a, an aluminum spacer it came out of some piece of hardware i i drilled the hole inside larger so it's a quarter inch hole and that is used within here and where the spacer goes run that because we need to get the nut away from this because the nut will rub on parts 
So, one more thing. Here we have something, if I can dig it out. If you can see it. It's a three-bladed, three somewhat like a propeller on an airplane. Uh, the, the blades are acrylic. Everything's stainless steel out here. It's all thread stainless. Whoops. This is, this is aluminum. It's an aluminum channel. If you can see that there. It's aluminum. And then we got nuts and we got nylon locking nuts. And anyway, this is just more plexiglass. You can order that online. More acrylic. But what we have in the middle is the interesting part. That's a serpentine belt tensioner pulley. In this case, it's off a 2003 Taurus. And it can be off just about any, any uh, somewhat older car. These, these are kind of ubiquitous back in that time period. It's a nice big pulley. It's got a big bearing under there. You've got this metric thread, which if you don't like the metric, you can get rid of it and put a three quarter, th get a three eighth inch bolt in there and it'll work just fine. So that should work pretty well. That's a nice, nice big way to house your bearing and to uh, attach it to something. That is all for today. Have fun. Okay, it's me again. I, I realized I didn't show something very clearly. So here we, here we have the all thread that's on the end. You know, the part of it over here, the word gig, and then the part I removed here, I want to show you what's underneath. It fits on there like this. And you can see it's, a, it's kind of intricate in how these uh, four pieces of aluminum, aluminum are hooked onto this device. Let's, let's turn it over. That's that star-shaped thing there is one of the things you can get from the robotics company listed below. And so that sits on... It's hard to do this with one hand. It sits on there like that. And this is where this spacer came into, into play. This sp uh, spacer I mentioned I drilled a hole through. So the spacer sits on top. In order to get this nut spaced out because the nut doesn't fit down into this resulting hole very well. You see it's recessed now because of that star-shaped plate is on top of the bearing housing. So that's why I had to do that. And the little aluminum plate here, the circle, is just to keep water out of it. I didn't explain that either. So we just put that back on. Now we're done. Bye-bye.